but your princess is terrifying. She is so scary looking, and I don't think anybody's coming to rescue her. Oh no! If you stare in her eyes, you'll get. You nope. know, you could. <laughs> no, thank you. I won't do it. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, that was a little bit of a different intro. Anyway, um, art is certainly in the eye of the beholder. Um, there's no doubt about it. Different people have different tastes. And this is an argument, if you've been in comics, you've, you've experienced for a long time. I remember having fierce arguments with people about Michael Magnola's Wolverine. He did this pretty amazing and, and somewhat hard to find uh, Wolverine uh, in the Savage Land. And he goes up against Apocalypse. And it's a pretty amazing a story. Michael Mignola illustrates that thing. I loved it, but a lot of people looked at that and was like, this is the most disgusting trash version of Wolverine ever, and they just hated Mignola's art. And actually, if you go back, you know, everybody looks back at the past with kind of rose-colored glasses, but there were people in Todd McFarlane's early Spider-Man run that thought his stuff was just terrible, you know, too sketchy, too line art, you know, everything else. Um, people definitely have fond memories back, but I mean, I think everyone who's been in comics is aware that uh, Rob Liefeld has been teased once or twice about feet <laughs> and and just backgrounds and other things as his characters. And so you, if you, you can always find somebody who loves artwork in comics and who hates the same artwork, whether it's uh, where where is J. Scott Campbell hiding the girl's organs to, uh, you know, Erica Henderson, what's with this weird kind of mutoided face uh, that these characters seem to have. Uh, there's different styles for everybody. Um, and, and in some cases, that's caused, I think, these arguments to become... Uh, shut down or disingenuous. Sometimes people will talk about art in a comic, uh, like some of the way She-Hulk has been rendered lately, or uh, Tigra or others, and they say this this looks like really disturbing, really disgusting, and it's met with uh, you know a lot of kind of knee jerk. Well, not every style is for everybody, and that's true. Like I just said, this is definitely true. Different people have different styles, different tastes. However, there are some you know, objective things we can say about art. You know, for example, uh, there are comic artists who skimp on the backgrounds completely, and they're just gradients or colors. There's a period in the 90s where a lot of uh, people had, you know, discovered Photoshop filters for the first time, and it's like, let's just make a brick wall here using the filter. And and you could tell, you know, it, it was out of it was out of angle, out of proportion. Um, the character's kind of at an angle, but the bricks are solid because nobody knows how to use a rotate tool in Photoshop and that kind of stuff. There's plenty of, of, of you know, cheap tricks people have used with digital. Uh, another big one is tracing. You know, Norman Osborn, uh, under the hands of Mike Dodato, uh, was Tommy Lee Jones. It was clear it was Tommy Lee Jones. And uh, Dodato is a, a artist people like a lot, but at the same time, you look at some of these characters and it's like... All right, it's hard not to think this is tracing. And in the late 80s and early 90s, there were some big scandals around tracing. And, and Peter David, in his uh, old column, would sometimes use examples. And in particular, he took some shots at the image people because there was a lot of um, back and forth feuding going on at the time. But, you know, some very obvious, very apparent traces. Today, it's kind of like everybody's just given up on that, that there's traces all over the place. Um, whether it's uh, Greg Land finding you know porn actresses to to have you know, whatever it happens to be, there's tracing, and so it feels like we've, we've kind of accepted that a little bit as a, as a as a culture. But um, in many cases, when the tracing is done poorly, like for example, I think Greg Land he puts together pages whether you like it, whether you don't like his faces, whatever else. Um, there's some skill there that you could see he's doing the tracing well, and then there's other places where they're clearly not doing the tracing well, and this is one area where. If you're doing a crowdfunded comic or an indie comic, it's like painfully aware when you're taking some of these shortcuts that we saw in the 90s, either with Photoshop filters or with pasted in backgrounds, whatever it happens to be, uh, the art just looks weird. And I don't think that's a case where you can look at it and say, well, everybody has different tastes. I mean, in some cases, there's there are such things as kind of basic perspective and, and, and basic making the page work. Uh, Jack Kirby would draw crazy cosmic stuff. And you could argue that he, he was not following the rules of perspective in some cases because he was creating these fantasy elements. He was doing it his way, but he made the style work. 
his pages look coherent. They look like, you know, you didn't have one panel looked one way and the next panel looked a different way. Or you have a character rendered kind of tall and muscly in one area and then skinny and, and two feet shorter in the next area for no apparent reason. Not just because it was a Hulk turning into Bruce Banner, but because, you know, there seemed to be just kind of random art being thrown around on the page. Um, and then there's, but but here comes to the other part of this, is that I think we need to, to grow some tougher skin. And when I say we, I mean creators, uh, fans, everybody else. We need to grow a little bit tougher skin because, um, like my Michael Magnola example in the beginning, people do have different tastes, they have different things, they'll joke about certain things. I led with that clip. Um, there's, there's definitely, uh, we, we should have a good sense of humor about this stuff. And I hate that in comics right now, if you don't like art, you, you, you can't just, well, on both fronts, you can't just say, I don't like this. You have to go into maybe a 15 minute rant about why you don't like it. And then the other side, people are just not able to, to just go, okay, that person doesn't like this art. It's got to become cultural. It's got to become, you don't like this because this artist happens to be, you know, X, Y, or Z. And that's, that's, why you don't like it. It's like people are searching for deeper reasons. And on top of all that, we should be able to have fun. Um, this clip I started out the video with, I mean, hopefully it's, it's meant to be funny. And if you if your feelings are hurt, if inside you feel like, I can't take that joke, then you're, 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 you're on the wrong track in life. <laughs> I'll broaden it to that. You're, you're, you should be able to laugh at this stuff and just you know, every artist, everyone from Jim Lee, Frank Miller, uh, it, whoever you want to throw, uh, Chris Bacalo, whoever you want to throw at the page, uh, including Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, the greats, um, every artist has pages or panels that are a stinker. Um, there's an argument where there's the Rob Liefeld picture of Captain America and his chest is like kind of out of control uh, all over the place. And uh, Rob Liefeld has pushed back hard against that going, you know, well, that was never printed. Um, it was used in uh, it was used in advertising and promo materials. It wasn't actually in a comic, but that's kind of missing the point. Um, it was still drawn, and some people can can joke about it. Now, does, should people be like grinding that axe every single hour of every single day for years? No, of course not. That is psychotic. But the fact that we can see this piece of art and go, "Ah, oh, this looks silly," and and joke about it is normal. And I will tell you that uh, even, you know, Steve Ditko, who is not the most, most um, I would say, uh, a vocal positive person. <laughs> That's not the right way to say it. I, he, I don't know. He wasn't crowd friendly. Let's, let's put it that way. He wasn't the most crowd friendly guy. Um, he could take a joke. Um, a lot of these creators were able to accept that, you know, every now and then the panel doesn't work, something wrong, people are making fun of it. Um, I think that just like in school with bullying, if you show that you have paper thin skin, anytime anyone pokes fun at you, even when it's harmless, I'm not talking about a mob attacking you or, you know, a 20 minute roast videos or any of that crap. I'm, I'm saying it, just somebody making a fun joke. If you show a sensitivity, if you can take no joke and you're like, ah, angry, uh, block, and, and here's 50 posts after I block, kind of expressing how mad I am, then all you're doing is asking for a lot more of it. You're, people are going to zoom in on the fact that you have uh, no no skin. You know, your your skin is paper thin, and you cannot take any kind of joke. And the joke's going to slowly become less of a friendly joke and more of a joke on you. I think uh, Tom King has slipped into that territory where people have poked some fun at him, and he just he has no no patience for it at all anymore. And, and it's like, on one hand, yes, it's your right not to have any patience for jokes, but just for your own self interest. Uh, flying off the handle at things that are innocent and harmless are silly. I made some some jokes about Johnny Cates um, in the you know using the heroes in crisis way, um, the modal where the the person is talking kind of into the camera, and I used a pic clip of Donny Cates and I, I made did a little comic strip of him, uh, basically uh, complaining about the um, the shippers between Eddie and uh, Eddie Brock and and Venom, and how they're crazy. And, and Donny Cates like, what's going on here? And Donny Cates thought it was funny. He, he came back, he's like, oh, this is funny. Was I poking at him a little bit? Yes, yes, I absolutely was. I was poking at his haircut or something else, I don't remember. But it was friendly. And he thought it was funny, and I think he retweeted at the time, and, you know, he took a joke, so good on him. That's that's what you should do. Um, others had, had zero, like, they, they saw us like, oh, you're making any kind of light of me? No, I can't take it. And, and there's always exterminating circumstances. If you had people coming at you in waves for a year, I get that, you know, you're worn out. 
but we should be able to look at art like the She-Hulk example, like others that have come out, like Rob Liefeld's giant chest, like uh, Jim Lee has some some really clunky Psylocke images. A lot of people uh, will put those up going, this is the best rendition of Psylocke ever. And he does, he draws an amazing one. But there's some others where like the, the leg has kind of become disconnected from the body and it's just, it's just weird. You know, look at his early Solo Avengers Mockingbird work. There's some great stuff in there and then there's some really weird derp faces in there. It happens, everybody has that. And to be just kind of lighthearted about it, to not get so uptight, um, it's 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 better. It's better for all of us to be able to make jokes every now and then. It's better for the creator's well-being and not to go so hung up in that. And and yes, goes without saying, fans should not uh, you know endlessly roast people over every line that they draw. That's also that that is stalkerish behavior. That's crazy too. But we can all lighten up a little bit. There's some crazy art out there, and definitely art is subjective. But there are also some, we, we have to admit, there are some objective things in there as well. You know, it, proportionalize, if you're drawing some people having a conversation in the coffee shop, you found that one of your character's heads is roughly the same size as the entire torso and legs, and the, the character in question is not MODOK or the leader, then uh, or Joss Whedon, then, you know, you're, you're do, you've done something wrong. That's not how people are supposed to look. Uh, but, but anyway... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my two cents on it anyway. Hey, I hope everybody uh, has a great weekend. Um, you know, enjoy the sun. Don't get the virus. Um, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook, Comic Perch. Most importantly, thanks for listening.